The Pollen 2 model for apples is available through the Washington State University Ag WeatherNet website at weather.wsu.edu. It is a decision support tool intended to add some science to the art of chemical thinning. The first step in using the model is to visit Ag WeatherNet in your preferred web browser at weather.wsu.edu. You will be presented with the front page of the Ag WeatherNet website showing a map of the stations which make up the weather network. If you do not already have one, you'll need to create a free account in order to access the pollen tube model. On the left hand side of the page, find and click on the sign up link. AgWeatherNet respects your privacy and will not share or sell your information, and there is no cost associated with the creation of the account or use of the web page and associated tools. You will need to enter your name, then choose an easy to remember username, then enter and confirm a password and email address. If you've forgotten your username or password, your email address can be used to retrieve or reset it. Now, enter your company or organization name and address in the space provided. This information is only used to help AgWeatherNet provide the best services possible, tailored to the needs of our users. Read and agree to the disclaimer and terms of service and let us know whether you plan to republish information from AgWeatherNet to the public. Finally, click on the subscribe button and you will be ready to log in. To log into AgWeatherNet, on the left side of your web browser, find the space for your username and password. Enter them, then click Login. You may optionally select the Keep Me Logged In checkbox so you don't need to retype your username and password every time you log in. When you've successfully logged into AgWeatherNet, you will again be presented with the front page showing a map of the stations which make up the weather network. You may notice that there are now additional tools located in the left hand menu. We'll get to the pollen tube model soon, but first let's look at the map in order to identify a weather station close to your area of interest. You may prefer the satellite view rather than the map view. By using the built-in map controls or double clicking with your mouse on the map, you can zoom in to get a closer look. As you find your area of interest, you can select the pinpoints on the map for information about the weather station at that location by clicking on the pinpoint with your mouse. Note the name of the weather station in the top left corner as you'll be selecting that station when creating a block in the pollen tube model. Once you're comfortable with your choice of weather stations, find and click the link in the left hand menu called pollen tube model. During the appropriate part of the year, the model link will appear prominently in the menu. However, in the off season, the model is still accessible by first selecting the crop models links and then finding pollen tube model in the expanded menu below crop models. The Ag WeatherNet webpage will refresh to display the pollen tube model. The model interface consists of a drop down list to select between existing orchard blocks, a checkbox to restrict that same list to blocks in the current calendar year, and a tabbed view control that, to begin with, shows two tabs. The Help tab can be used to learn more about the research that went into development of the model, further details on how to use the model, and other helpful information to assist you. The Add New Block tab is used for adding a new orchard block in the model. It will take only a few moments to fill in the required information to create your first block. Notice that the page contains a Show Help link which will toggle the display of helpful information that can assist in determining the values which should be entered. Step 1 is to create a block name. We recommend you include the year in the name of the block for the sake of clarity and to make it easier to manage your blocks over the years. In our example, we will use the name West 40 2014 by typing it into the input field provided. Next, we'll select the weather station we'd like to use for this block, which provides detailed temperature information used to estimate the growth rate of the pollen tube. For our example, we will select the weather station at the Washington State University Tree Fruit Research Extension Center in Wenatchee. Third, you'll need to select the variety of apple from the drop-down list. For this example, we select Gala. The next two inputs may be the most complex to determine. The model start date is the date and time at which a typical tree in your block has the number of flowers open that you'd like as fruit. For our example, we will choose March 10, 2014 at 3 o'clock p.m. While determining average style length is covered as another topic, the basics of determining average style length are that king bloom sample should be taken as early as possible to establish average style length of the variety being tested. You should use a random flower sampling of 25 to 50 flowers for your block area and you should measure only the longest style from each flower sampled. You will then use the average style length as the benchmark for flower fertilization in the model. 
For our example, we will use an average style length of 7.68 millimeters. With all of these details filled in, you can then click on the Save New Block button, which will immediately retrieve available weather observations and forecasts for your selected station and begin to create a model of pollen tube growth over time. Notice that in the block drop-down list, your new block is selected. If you had multiple orchard blocks defined, you'd be able to select them from this list in order to view the model output for these blocks. Now that you've created your first block, you will have several more tabs available in the Pollen Tube Growth Model Interface. The first that we will look at is the Overview tab, which offers an at-a-glance dashboard style summary of your orchard block, including block name, apple variety, weather station, current and daily temperature, estimated growing degree days, accumulated and recent style growth details, and the target fertilization style length. The chart in the bottom right of the Overview tab is for reference purposes and charts daily high and low temperatures and accumulated base 43 growing degree days. You can click on the chart for an expanded high resolution view of the data. The chart in the top right of the Overview tab displays both the observed and forecast average hourly temperature of your block from the time that the model was started as well as the estimated and predicted accumulated pollen tube growth since the model start date or since the last spray application. Clicking on this chart will bring forward an expanded view with higher resolution. The Growth Graph tab displays the same detailed high resolution chart as clicking on the growth chart in the Overview tab. Notice the red line representing the average style length and point of fertilization and the cumulative pollen tube growth. If the cumulative pollen tube growth reaches the point of fertilization, then the model is predicting that those flowers have been pollinated. The dotted lines on the charts represent predicted values. The dotted black line is the predicted hourly temperature, while the dotted orange line is the predicted pollen tube growth. The Growth Table tab contains the same information as the Growth Graph, with the addition of a calculated percentage of target and a checkbox for marking when sprays have been applied. By default, the growth table data is displayed with the most recent values first and the oldest values last. If predictive values are available, then they are displayed in this table format and denoted with an asterisk to indicate that these values are predicted for the future. As you use your model, you'll notice that a color coding method has been included that will give a visual indication of how close the model's estimated pollen tube growth is to the targeted style length. When the growth is less than 70% of the target, the background color of the table is white, while between 70 and 85 percent, the background will be filled in a green color. From 85 to 100 percent of targeted growth, the background of the table will be yellow, and if the targeted growth is estimated to be above 100 percent of the target, the background will become red. When a spray application has been initiated, you'll want to find the date and time of the application and click the box under Spray Applied to tell the model to reset the accumulated pollen tube growth. Once the model knows that spray has been applied, you will be able to see on the growth graph that the accumulated growth has been reset to zero and that the next interval has begun. As the accumulated growth approaches the targeted style length, you can use the predicted temperature and growth to make management decisions about when the next spray will be applied. The tabs for the GDD graph and GDD table present site-specific information regarding the number of growing degree days observed for your block. This is for information purposes only and does not influence spray timing as far as the model is concerned. Finally, notice the Edit Block tab, which will allow you to edit the details of your orchard block. You could change the block name, the variety of apple, the average target style length, or the weather station used by the model. You can also review or change the date and time the model started, as well as the timing of up to five spray applications. To save any changes and be returned to the Overview tab, enter the desired changes and then click on the Update Block button. This concludes the Pollen Tube Growth Model training video. Please direct any questions, comments, or concerns to AgWeatherNet by email to weather at wsu.edu or visit weather.wsu.edu and click on Contact AWN.